the story is pretty known in this area, um, but I won't assume that everybody knows who I am because who am I? Um, around five years old, I used to start. Oh, uh, well, not I used to start. I started calling this morning show in New York City called uh, the Z Morning Zoo on Z100 with uh, Scott Shannon, and. I, I, I was like five years old and I would hear them give out the phone number. So I thought you could just call the radio station. So I used to just call and he would put me on time to time. And I, I lied because I thought you had to be an adult. I knew you could call. So I would lie and say like, whatever my age was. And he would ask me these questions and I was making it up as I went along. And uh, like he remembered this. I'm in some of their best of stuff from way back in the in the way where I would call. And it's obvious I'm lying, but I'm just matter matter of fact saying it like I'm an adult so I could talk to somebody on the radio. And uh, ever since then, I the, and, you know, living in the suburbs of New York, there's just so much to listen to, at least at the time. That that's what got me into radio. It's just like you could do all of this stuff. You could just go on and talk. It, what made, they made it seem so effortless. Like you could talk about whatever you want, whatever was going on. And when I was, I guess, junior high, high school, I was starting to try to figure out how people did all of this stuff. And eventually, I got to the point where, in my junior year of high school, um, saw an ad. You don't see this anymore, but it was an ad in the local papers that a radio station was opening up on Long Island, and they were in need of promotions people and, and other non-on-air stuff. And my dad happened to see it, and he goes, hey, this station's opening up, and the town's maybe like 20 minutes away from me. It's like, you should go over there and, and apply. So I went over there and applied, and I lied. Because they said, oh, you got to be in college. You got to get credit. And I go, yeah, I can get all of that stuff. Great. So I filled out whatever paperwork I needed. And then they gave me this paperwork to give to the college. And I said, great. Never get, I wasn't in college. And I didn't give it back to them because we were still, it was right before everything was on computer. So it was, was it still, like an internship? I thought it was going to be some sort of internship, but it turned out to be a paid promotions spot because they had nobody it was an oldie station i don't think it exists anymore but it was called b103 so i said yeah i'll fill out everything and i filled out what i needed to but never gave them the college stuff and they just got to the point where they assumed they had it so they didn't never bothered asking and i was doing promotions um yeah the summer before my senior year i'm i'm out at car dealerships on the side of the highway with a guy who's in a b suit trying to attract people to come over on a saturday morning look two months goes by really fast when that's all you have for your summer and um then in my senior year i got a uh, another job with another long island radio station that i also lied and said i was in college and did the same thing, filled all the paperwork out, just never handed them the college stuff. A uh, station called WBLI, which is a big CHR top 40 station out on Long Island. And worked there for a little bit, got a job with NBC in New York, worked with them for uh, my uh, summer of my, so March of my senior year, all the way till when I started college in September. I worked there in Manhattan, so I'd be going to school during the week on the weekends or on Fridays, I'd, I'd take the train into Manhattan and, and work there. Worked uh, the Olympics in, in Atlanta with them for uh, for about two months. And um, just from there was until I actually had college credit to prove that I was allowed to be at these stations. Yeah, you just lied and said whatever you could to get your foot in the door and start learning stuff. So you would get into these places. You'd I'd hang out with the production guys. I'd hang out with anyone that would let me shadow what they were doing and ask questions to see what it was. Okay. And so you're just uh, taking it all in. All in. All in. And then stealing what you can along the way. Not I know people in radio they would take the prize closets, you know, in the promotions oh, yeah. room. They would be stealing all of this stuff. But I'm looking more at um this is gonna make sense to only people who did production, but uh like the uh the C D library for brown bag. You know, these are all these production um libraries that companies spent hundreds of dollars on that to get the licensing so they could do the imaging for their stations with it. And when no one's looking, I'm putting them into the CD burners that they had there <laughs> and copying them for myself so I could take them take them home and learn how to make all of this stuff. So Everywhere I went, I took things and tried to mimic what they did. And once I learned how to do what they did, then I'm like, all right, how do I make it 
work for me? How do I make it sound different than that? And so it's uh, it's like Eddie Guerrero. If you were a wrestling fan, you lie, you cheat, you steal. And then eventually you get to be like, all right, I have all the skills. I don't need to do that anymore. I can now work on my own. So, it's re- you're being resourceful. Very much so. You're doing all you can because there was no way I could afford those libraries. There's no way I had the I could afford the equipment at the time that they, they had to, to do all of this stuff. So uh, it was always that way until I started uh, landing real jobs. And then once you have a job, it's easier to transition to other stations and stuff and uh then it just kind of snowballed uh, from there i landed gigs with uh it was a majority was new york stations during college i worked some pennsylvania stations because i went to school in pennsylvania and then uh back to new york florida for a couple of years then back to new york ever since so the majority of my career has always been new york city and um yeah i was working at stations i worked for um for a couple years while in college, the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, where Clear Channel at the time, which is iHeartRadio now, Clear Channel figured out, oh, we should be streaming our radio stations. Not everyone had the internet capability to do it, but they had it there in case you did. You could do that. Um, when I worked for Infinity Broadcasting, which was CBS Radio, which is now Odyssey. It's like five companies removed at this point. Uh, Infinity Broadcasting at the time, you may know that name because they were the Howard Stern company. They had stations all across the, the country. They were the biggest competitor to Clear Channel. They would not stream a radio station. It took years before they finally got to the fact that, that you could stream on the computer while at work or at home. You could listen to a radio station. And they were behind the times on that. And then they had to play catch up really fast and and it's always just amazing getting cameras in the studio. Howard having that set up in the 90s was unheard of. You'd never had the radio shows documenting their shows or if celebrities were in there. They took photos and then it showed up in radio and records. It was not online. There was no social media. But Howard had cameras. Howard had all this stuff. So you go back and you can watch shit all the way from, to the early. Sorry, I didn't mean the correct. That's a great. All no, you can pass on here. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> yeah. To the early 90s. And radio took forever to do that, too. Even when we were doing Opie and Anthony, we every company, we were screaming, we need cameras in studios so we can capture all this stuff. And we had to do it ourselves. We had camcorders set up in, in, I mean, like in a studio that wasn't built or designed to shoot for cameras. We had them set up wherever to record what we could. Now, it's every new studio has it all in there and the jocks and the hosts are complaining that the cameras are in there now it's like it's never the right time for anything creating a studio and everything like that at home before even the pandemic right what kind of sparked that was that just kind of your the radio nerd in you i just always wanted stuff at home like i wanted to be able i was for the longest time i'm editing some of our uh best of shows like we're going to be off for two weeks or a week or whatever is going on i got to build these best of shows and they want you to do it in their systems at whatever company you're at where it's uh almost like it's in, it's locked in their system your archives your production everything's there they want you to use their editors which are terrible um <clears throat> to try to it's dragging this line to here and this line to here and hopefully it, the volume matches up and hopefully it mixes it's very basic you can't do anything there and they oh we we'll schedule it that way i'm not scheduling like a hundred different elements to run a four hour show when I can build everything in Pro Tools or uh, a, a Audition, Adobe Audition, make it sound like a million bucks, and then re ingest the all mixed file back into the system. So I had to figure out early on it's like, well, I need to make a copy for this company, XM, uh, in the early days for ONA. And then a copy for me, and I have a copy of the archive, and they have it. So if I was at home and I had to make something on my laptop, I'd be sitting there in my living room watching TV, headphones on, with Audition in on the laptop there, trying to build, you know, a, a week's worth of programming before we go on vacation, putting all that together. And I wanted to have a setup at home where if I needed to voice an intro or or something I had to change, I could just do it here, not have to go to the studios, record it take the file with me, then mix it all together. And you're wasting, you know, half a day waiting to go back into work to, to go do all that. If I could do it here from home, I could just run down to the studio. I can just put all this together and, and have it done and do it on my time 
and actually be more productive and be more creative than having to sit there, drive back into Manhattan, you know, and get there at five in the morning, do the show, try to get the other stuff done. And then I'm, I'm leaving two o'clock in the afternoon to try to drive back before rush hour, which takes four hours in Manhattan, uh, rush hour to get out of Manhattan, to go home, to do all this. Like you're wasting so much time traveling. You're wasting so much time waiting to do things at work when you can do some stuff at home. Um, I get it. People want to separate their job. And I, I understand that. But I don't look at this as a job. I look at this as if I wasn't doing it professionally, I'd be home doing this anyway. I'd be editing all this stuff. I'd be here. I, I mean, I can show you this. It's a horrible system, but it, it helps me through here. All of these things. All my whole desk is just filled with color coded post-it notes where I, I watched the TV show, I heard a commercial, I watched the movie, I'll pause it, I get the time code, I write the episode down, I write the movie, and then I go back and I, I pull the drops to use for production. I pull it to use for, um, hey, this is something that we're doing currently on one of the shows. This might work as, as part of an intro. Hey, I just heard this song on the radio. I Shazam everything now and I do a screenshot so I can go later. I'm like, I can make a rejoinder out of that. I can use this for a bed for production. I can do all of this stuff. That's all this is. It doesn't stop. So if, again, if I wasn't doing this for a living, I'd be doing this anyway just for myself. So I built everything at home just so I could do all of this. You don't do enough to let people talk in here. It's like you're reading a liner card and then little bumpers are throwing it to traffic, whatever. All right, that's a cost-effective way to do the bare minimum that no one's really going to give a shit about your station. But there's so many people, and we met so many nice people at the at the boot camp thing that are doing, letting their personality shine with quick hits. Like, fortunately, some of them work in mornings, so they can talk a little bit longer. But some of these people were middays, they were afternoons, they were nights, and they couldn't talk as much. It's like, let them talk. It's not like they need to go on a full five-minute thing but give them more than 15 10 15 seconds ramping into the next song let them talk for a minute like you're playing the new taylor swift album let them talk about the fact that she just went to target and she saw that the shelves were empty or that there was nothing that, like whatever the experience let them be personable with the audience so that somebody can try to make a connection with your station and go i like listening to them in the evening i like listening to them in the afternoon and then they're going to stay around they're going to seek out what you do when you're shutting everybody down what's the point you're listening to somebody else's playlist when you, when you do that and look we all have friends we're all on spotify or uh, apple music or any of those things and we have friends that know us we love them if they sent a friend sent you a playlist to listen to not all the time but the majority of the time you're going to look at your phone and go i don't want to listen to this and they may have the, the best uh, intent uh, at heart and they may know you so well but it's somebody else's playlist. like i don't want to listen to somebody else's playlist and when people started to figure out in the last decade oh my god radio is just somebody else's playlist that i can't skip i can't skip through the song this is what radio is now that kind of killed the whole demeanor the whole smoke and mirrors of being infatuated with the radio thinking that the music was the answer for people there it's the personalities let people talk let people do their thing work with them too if they're going too long and it didn't sound right talk to them off air and go hey i think you went a little too long with that but you know do what program directors used to do now it's consultants telling you don't let people talk don't don't listen to them be a hands-on manager Work with your on-air talent and say, hey, look, I think this went a little too long. You're saying this particular phrase a lot and it's very noticeable. Let's try to work on that. Or here's an idea. Since you were talking about this, maybe next time, see if you talk about this. And, or did you see this movie, this show? Bring that up or things like that is the stuff that keeps your audience engaged, will increase your TSL if they even care about that anymore. And now it's all just, you know, the clicks on the Facebook page and, and, and on the what's on the website. Uh, make sure you include your two fucking, your, your two blog posts every day. Yeah. You got to have your two blog posts every day to talk about you walking around. This. No one cares. No one cares. Let your people talk. Help them develop. And your station will benefit from this. You'll everybody wants the money now. They never think about well. If we do this now, eventually it'll be a lot more money down the line because we had this in place. Nobody thinks that way anymore. It's like get it now, get it now, get it now. Oh, I'm leaving the station. Oh, I've been fired. Whatever. It's never the what's how this is going to look in the future. It's like what can we take from everybody right now, and that's it. 
crazy that they haven't figured that out when you when you literally I mean you don't even have to pull numbers you can just see by you know who you know the people that attend these things to go meet influencers that hours that people spend on YouTube watching vlogs you know hours of podcasting that people listen to clearly there's not a problem with people listening to other people talk so it's just crazy that all these people gravitate towards this yet you're right radio still takes out they don't want them to talk or have a personality but I'm yeah, like and they wonder why they when, you know like oh join this uh, on air personality from uh, two to four on Saturday down at the sunglass hut and they set up the tents and everything there and they're wondering why they don't get anybody coming down to these promotions you know these poor air talent or the promotion people are stuck there and maybe four people came by and that was it so now they're stuck talking with the business owner or the manager there and the manager's looking like why did I spend this money this did nothing for us and they're wondering why it didn't bring anybody down even if you're doing the live hits or whatever because you don't let them talk. You don't have a connection with the audience. There's no, there's nothing there for people wanting to go down there and do all of these things. If you had something where it's like, I listen to this, uh, this girl on midday all the time, or I listen to these guys, uh, in the afternoon all the time and they're actually doing an appearance. I want to go see what they look like. I want to go meet them and everything because they're involved. They're invested. They don't let you do that anymore. And then they wonder why they're, they're, uh, their local promotions and stuff. Even when you're giving out tickets. You know, it used to be it's like, oh, we're going to give out Jingle Ball tickets. We're going to give out this stuff. People would race down there to try to get the tickets. Now, it's like, do you give away the tickets? No, we still got like 19 pairs <laughs> left, you know, and we started with 30. And then we got to figure out what to do with this stuff. So even um, uh, Sean Tempesta that you had mentioned, he, you know, because you're right, no, especially the car dealerships, nobody goes to those um, remotes. But it was interesting because, you know, he was doing that streaming show the free for all. And there was times over the pandemic where, you know, they would share pictures from the there. And there was people that actually would show up, but they were people that were locally that would, that yes, listened to him on the radio, but knew him more from the show. And I think that's more why they were actually showing up because they felt like they had a connection to him because they were interacting face to face or on chat and things like that. And I think they ended up selling like four or five cars or something like that from people. Cause then I think they built a trust there too. You know, this guy that we interact with every day is talking about this place and he gets his car from there too. And, and they're selling, and it's a small audience that was on Twitch compared to the huge one that you have on the radio. So it's why don't we marry them? When they realize that, you know, it's like, well, we could advertise on this celebrity podcast, and the reach is going to be, you know, several hundred thousand people or whatever, but the engagement is next to nothing. Like when they tweet out on the company account, it's like, oh, another episode of this, and you look uh, at the tweets, and there's maybe four likes. You know, and you go, that's weird. So you go digging through their account again and you see there's little to no engagement and they're promoting these big names. But then you see a smaller name or a local guy or maybe somebody who's sort of syndicated or something goes on there and you see that they got several hundred um, uh, responses and, you know, they're in the thousands as far as the likes go and the retweets and stuff. It's better for your money and for the advertiser. If you hyper focus on an, on an audience that, look, we only have 5,000 people that listen to this show. Yeah, but they're active. They're part of it. There's 5,000 who are, are, who are very involved with this compared to being on this station on in the morning and they have this potential reach, which is not accurate anymore. None of those ratings really mean anything, but they have this reach and then they go to the event and maybe you got a couple dozen people there. But meanwhile, this small podcast that you don't think is worth anything, again, has 5,000 loyal subscribers that are, that are buying their merch, that are buying everything that they're doing. They're showing up to these makeshift events that they're at a food festival. It's like come by and, say, and they're getting all this interaction. Spend your money on that. Spend your money on those smaller shows that knew how to do this right and interact and talk with their audience and be part of this. You could spend, you know, five figures advertising on this morning show in whatever market. But are you getting that return on your investment by doing that? Or we could focus on this show that really drew, drove in a lot of business for our subscription service that we're advertising or, or like um, you know, those food companies that like HelloFresh and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, it's like, well, your audience, be it small, bought everything. So we're going to continue advertising with them as opposed to this major show where they sold nothing. And listen to your shows, too. If you're in management and you're in sales, listen to what's on your station. A lot of them don't listen, don't know anything about their on-air talent. And they're like, hey, we want you to go do – we're going to give away NASCAR tickets. You're going to go down to the 7-Eleven, whatever. What? Why? I'm, I don't – I'm not – no, we want you to do it. I don't want to do this. Why? 
because I know nothing about. Why didn't you ask the guy over? Uh, you know, the midday guy. Uh, he knows all about that. He talks about. It. He's wearing the stuff. Why didn't you go to him? No, well, you're on the morning show, so it, it, they're buying just the morning show. But it makes no sense for me to do it. Have the after the midday guy go do the hits for the morning show because he's going to talk to them about. Like, know what the people's interests are on the on your station. If these people, this person watches Netflix all the time, so if you're doing live reads for street, that's the person you want to do it. Or this person's into this thing here. And, Figure out the personalities on your station. Know what they're doing. So that also helps you sell. Like, you know, they're really interested in this stuff here. Let me see if I can get a sponsorship that ties into what their interest is or what they always talk about. And then you're getting in new revenue and creative revenue for all that. It's very lazy and very sterile with this world right now. They just like who somebody wants to buy. Cool. All right. We'll give you nine shows. And uh, that's it. They don't care past that point. And then a lot of people now have multiple jobs for a position that doesn't require that. I, I've had some job opportunities where they've talked to me. I'm like, all right, well, here's the job. Here's what you're doing. You're going to oversee this. Okay, great. All right, now page two. Wait, what? What's page two? All right, well, now you got to do this, and now you got to do this. And th I go, this is four different people's jobs. Right, well, you're going to do all that. Now. How am I supposed to do this? Right. And it's not for a matter of not be, not being able to multitask. It's like this takes a lot of attention and time to to handle all of this stuff. Then you want me to do all these smaller things within this. That is too much. It's not about being able to do it. It's too much. It takes up too much of my time. And now you're, you're saying, well, I got to do the rest of this from home. So now I'm working even more hours than I normally would for this job because now you're adding four more positions to me and not paying me for them, by the way, or a slight increase that doesn't justify all the work you're doing. But these were other people's jobs. Now, I, so five, five positions I got to do now and you're going to pay me this. Yes. No, I'm not doing that. Well, somebody else will do it. Then give it to somebody else. Well, then we don't need you here. Then you don't need me here. I had, um, I was recently approached about voice tracking and I said, oh, um, it's like uh, this company is like, oh, we'd like you to do some voice tracking. OK, um, where? And they told me some of the markets. I go, OK, how much? And they told me the dollar amount. And I go for the shit. I mean, for the, for an hour. And they go, no, for the shift. What? For the shift? Yeah. <laughs> It'll take you like half an hour to, to crank out a four hour show for, you know, some station down in, in, in Tennessee. And you go, no. I said, I got to know what the playlist is on the station. I got to prep what concerts are in the area that fit that music thing, unless you have that list for me. Um, I got to find what's been going on this week to tie it into the air breaks. That, no, you don't. You just got to read this stuff and read these little liners and all this other stuff. Go there. I go, no, there's still prep that needs to be done. I need an hour of prep before even going on to record stuff that would might maybe would take me half an hour because none of it's live, but they want to pay you like 30 bucks and you go, no. So turned down a handful of stations, didn't do it. Then somebody else in the company, uh, overheard and said, do you turn down all the voice tracking stuff? Yeah. Why? That's easy money. I go, it's not easy money. It's like, yeah, you no, know, you just do this and this. I go, that amount of money is not worth it to me. I'm at the point in my life where I'm like... Your time is valuable. Exactly. And a lot of people don't realize that, that your time is valuable to you. Even if you're doing nothing, it's still valuable to me that I'm sitting over there watching this movie. It was more important than making doing three stations and barely making $60 for doing three stations. It was not worth the time. It's not definitely not worth the money. And they look at you like... What? Why wouldn't you take this? It's an opportunity to, you know, so that they, it justifies you. I'm like, I'm, I'm not here to justify my job position all the time. I'm here to do a job and help other people and make them succeed. So the company succeeds and all this other stuff. It's not, I need to come in every day to justify why I'm allowed in the building to do all of this stuff anymore. My job should reflect on that justification of why you're hired me and why I'm here. It's not my main goal. It's like, how? Do, what do I have to do today to justify that I did my job so that I can do other things? It's not the reverse process. And the fact that they say, well, you, it's like, well, so I, why would I do that for that amount of money? Well, somebody else will do it. Then let somebody else do it. Go ahead. The fact that you say no sometimes now, they just go, it's like, I can't believe you said no to that. 
they didn't turn down an additional thirty thousand dollars to my salary for me adding these voice tracks to do like I don't have enough in my on my plate during the day. But to add in all these stations and markets that I'm not in to do all of this stuff here wasn't worth the money, and it's not worth my time. And it's just sad that th- th- that's another faction of radio where you got to do multiple people's jobs as your job now for no compensation. And then they also want you to voice track for pennies. And they say, oh, that's part of your job now, too. Look, just because you shut all these stations down, you fired everybody is not my problem to come in and, and fill those voids of the people you let go to do all of that. And I'm not... I know this comes off negative. I'm not being anti anything. I'm not being like, I am not a team player. I don't want to help. I want to help. You just understand your value and your worth. I know saying no isn't going to benefit me all the time, but somewhere down the line, it has to. That's a very powerful place to be. And I think when you get to the point where you can say no. Yeah, it's being in a place where you know your talents, you know your personality, you know how, that you work with people and to know your value, your worth, and tell them no. Just because things have changed doesn't mean that this has to be the way things are done now. You may not work, you may take you a long time, and that's unfortunate, but nothing's going to change unless you, you, you take a stand and go, this is not worth me or these other people doing all of this stuff because it doesn't translate into anything better for us or even the station. You know, the station... You lie and you say, yeah, station's first. Station's nowhere near the first on your priority. It's, am I getting enough money to get to work, to eat, to pay my rent, to take care of family, to do whatever you got to do you know, for your salary? And then go, well, how do I further my career? Then, oh, this also benefits the station? Great. You know, this all works out. You want them to need you more than you need them. And I think when you can kind of get that mind shift, it's 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 a great place to be. I love radio. I still love radio and is is pissed off as I am with a lot of things in this business, I'll still continue to love radio. It's an abusive relationship. But the way things are going now and the way every company, bigger company, is is acting, the only way I see radio surviving is that it all has to fall apart. These bigger companies need to collapse. They they're You see some of the bigger companies, their stock is in the toilet. Odyssey had their stock drop 98% in a week. You know, it was so bad. Um, These companies got to get to the point where their debt doesn't mean anything anymore. It's not as valuable as it used to be. They need to kind of fire sale. They need to sell off all these stations that they own. And it's weird to go back almost to the time before 1996 where Smaller companies owned a station or two in every market or in these other things. You need to have radio break down and be sold and do it the mom and pop way where like an insurance company buys a handful of stations in different markets. An eccentric millionaire just buying it as a vanity thing or as a hobby or whatever. Then lets people come in, the creative types, run it how you think it should be run. We're going to be hands off. Hopefully this is going to generate money. Bring in the days of people who are willing to actually... Uh, compete with the station across the street used to be a radio term, but now the station across the street is part of seven stations down the hall with you in that company. So you can't badmouth the other station. You can't outdo the other station in certain ways. We got to break it down to get back to these smaller operations so that one, it's more jobs for people Two, it's the creativity is allowed to come back. You're allowed to try new things and without risking the fact, oh, McDonald's isn't going to be happy. Well, then fuck McDonald's. You know, maybe McDonald's doesn't need to be advertising here. Yes, their money's good, but then at what cost of the business? It's suffering. Let all these people come back, be creative, do new things, reinvent everything, break it all down from the bigger companies to smaller stuff, and then it we rebuild again. It's going back to where we were in the 70s and the 80s where it was running rampant. You know, you back then you didn't think it was that much, but you look back now, if you listen to air checks and read things about stations in different markets in the seventies and the eighties, and you go, Oh my God, you can't even do that stuff. Now what they were doing, it's got to go back to that. Let free form stuff in, in the sense of just let people program, let content, uh, drive the station, drive your sales, 
the personalities, let people do their thing, have people collaborate together to work together, to be creative. You're not allowed to be that creative anymore. They really just homogenize it. Everyone has the same prep service because the company has owns that prep service. So you got that stuff and they're all doing, you know, how many times a year is it national pizza day? It's like seven times during the year. It's national pizza day. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, it's national ice cream day. Oh, it's radio DJ appreciation day. Really? Did the company buy us breakfast? Is there a cake there? No, there's nothing. This is all bullshit off the same you know, press release here. Let people do their thing. Let people get weird, get creative, get dark, get just just do things. People are afraid to do things. Company won't let you do things. Let people do things. And then you'll see that it will translate to stuff. People don't understand when they see podcasts. Like, how did that, uh, what's that Hot Wings show that's on YouTube all the time, right? That's just a guy who's eating hot wings with, with really spicy sauces talking to some minor celebrities and athletes. And then it built up to a bigger thing. That's not a concept that should be anything that works, but it did because people enjoyed it. It was something different, something unique and creative. Those kind of things, you've got to give it time, let it uh, support it, let it fester with the audience, and then it builds up. And now all of a sudden, you got this amazing property that's yours, that you own, that the company owns, that they can sell it, and you're making your money, and people want to be there, and people are having a good time doing this. That's unfortunately where it needs to go. It's like from the uh, the ashes of Rome. Let it all collapse let these small stations uh, go out and be bought up by other people and let's start over again. Unfortunately, that's the only way I see that this business survives. Take a chance. Let people go nuts. It's like, hey, I'm going to bring in a morning show that nobody thought would uh, would ever take a chance on. But we're going to see what it does or we're going to bring these people in. You know, this this girl's crazy, but I think she might work here in this. My, well, let's put her on at night so for this station here. Let's just see what she does. Take, nobody takes chances anymore. Right. I can't believe you played that song. Why? It makes perfect sense for this format, but it's not part of the 125 that were, you know, that we got, we had the research on and that were studied and everything. But that's such a small playlist. You know, that band has four other songs that we could, but they didn't chart well on the radio. But who cares? Because you're playing this one song that everybody knows. But you know what? Some of these other songs, if you mixed it in, uh, it used to be called uh, Oh Wow Moments, you know? So if you're in there and all of a sudden you're hearing, like you're on an alternative station and you hear this lesser song, it's like, wait, are they playing They Might Be Giants on here? Like they just played Weezer. They just played uh, you know, like an old Green Day thing. They played Blink. They played uh, My Chemical Ram. And then all of a sudden you're hearing uh, Anna Ang by They Might Be Giants or Istanbul, not Constantinople. And you go, oh my God, I remember that song. And it, it makes sense for the for the format. It's not like they threw Katy Perry hot and cold on in the middle of the thing that totally took you out of it. But it makes sense to throw something in there and, and have some fun with it. Songs people forgot. Songs that... I love those moments. Yeah. I haven't heard this in so long. What the heck? You know? Yeah, because radio won't play these things because it didn't chart well. Or this band is only known for these kind of things because they only had two number one hits. Yeah, but they had six in the top ten and you're not playing them. Well, they didn't research. Stop with the research. Everyone knows the basics of what your <laughs> format is. You have the staples. If you're a rock station or alternative station, whatever. Okay, you got Foo Fighters, you got um you got uh Pearl Jam, you got Nirvana, you got all the what's is now classic it's rock cool. stuff. <laughs> you got all that stuff in there. But hey, you know what else you can throw in there too? It's like, hey, throw a little of uh MGMT in there. You know, they had three big hits that you don't hear on the radio anymore. Throw those in. Mix some real big fish into there you know the one or two of their songs will fit in there throw some goldfinger and then like wait what and you start playing on there and you go oh my god that's the song from tony hawk pro skater i played that growing up and now it's back on the radio again it's like this station's awesome i'm gonna listen to this station there that's all it yes. takes it's little things like that to be creative have some fun loosen the reins on this stuff and you'll be like oh my god i'm listening you listen to this station they're playing stuff that i you never hear on the radio god forbid you know god forbid it's now off that that tight registered playlist that they spent thousands of dollars on consultants saying this is the stuff you got to play i am so pro radio i am so pro the personalities i am so pro this business because i don't know what else to do in my life if i'm not doing television and if i'm not doing radio i don't have any other purpose here and that's horrible to say about yourself but it's it's true for me i've been doing this since i was a kid my parents used to yell at me to say you need to go out on a friday night where other kids are constantly going out and they, they keep telling you got to stay home once in a while. They're trying to kick me out of the house because I'm sitting here learning to edit. I'm teaching myself these things there. It's all nerdy shit that really killed my social life. But I learned to do all this stuff because I was passionate about it. When I go on some of these rants, it's because I'm so frustrated. I've known what this business was 
and I know, or at least I have an idea of what it could be again and where it's at now, you're just sitting there. It's like, it's like you were doing a hundred on the highway and you just yanked the emergency brake. And that's where we're at right now. We're stuck in the middle of the highway while everything's going past you. And they're going, why are we not competing with them? Because you got the brake on this thing. Let the brake go and continue moving forward. And they don't do that. It comes off negative. And I, 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 I apologize for that. But I really, I really want people to succeed. I want shows to succeed. I'm in radio. I don't own a radio. I listen on the apps. I lived and I've worked personality radio, talk radio, morning show radio, syndicated radio. That's been my entire career. Other than Elvis Duran and whatever clips I see of Howard on Instagram, I don't listen to morning show radio anymore. I've tried. I find I look for new shows. And I constantly am scouring. Somebody tells me something. I try to listen to some people. And I, oh, actually, that's not true. Uh, entirely true. Woody out in L.A. Woody does a good show, too. Uh, and then sometimes, you know, when I get clips of BJ uh, uh, up in uh, Seattle. But they're not you used to be able to go to the market. It's like, oh, my God, I can't wait. To, who are the big morning shows and or who's the afternoon shows or the evening shows? Who are these people? And they're not there anymore. So I, I'm very pro all this stuff. I want everyone to succeed. I want this business to be better. And I don't know how else to make it better than other than constantly preaching to people how everything is wrong. And and some people tune that out. It's like, oh, all he does is bitch and complain. Yeah, I do. But it's because I care and I want this to be better. I love the rants, though, like when people get it because they get me all fired up. So I'm always like, yeah, fuck yeah, tell them. Because especially because you guys, like I would say, are all better talkers than me. I mean, this is you guys. This is what you guys do. So you guys articulate what I'm saying, what I'm thinking so much better. So I just edit it down and then... <laughs> You posted a clip of uh, of our friend Sarah the other day on your social media stuff and hearing her points. I'm like, yeah, she's right. I agree with what she said. Uh, but unfortunately for now, she's at a point and a lot of people out there who still work in radio have these feelings, have these views, but they can't say anything because of they're on the air currently or they're working, whatever. I am in in some way I'm with one company and then I I'm overseeing a couple other things so I have a hand in a lot of different stuff but I'm not just full time one company anymore so and even when I was my whole career with Opie and Anthony is we didn't give a shit we said whatever we wanted whether it was right or wrong was that's how we felt that's how we felt I'm not going to change that I'm a team player I can work with within the guidelines but i'm not going to change how i actually feel on things and i'm not going to make anyone else feel terrible i'm not going to ruin things for people but a lot of people that we all know work in this business and they can't say what they feel and they can't really voice their true frustration of what they're going through with their companies or what the industry is going through and i've been like i don't care because if you don't want to hire me then don't hire me. Somebody else will. And if this person's afraid to say something or do something, oh, no, you can't do that. Yeah, you can do that. You take a chance. That's the only way you're going to succeed. It may not pay off now, but somewhere down the line, if you don't take any chances, you don't get anywhere. If you start taking a lot of these chances, yeah, you may cause some problems, but what success story never had problems? You know, it's like, well, you thought you were down and out. Then all of a sudden somebody took a chance or a company took a chance and you tried what doing what you thought was right and doing what you did. And then all of a sudden it blew up and then it worked and you succeeded and whatever. Thank God you took those chances. So any of the people that we're friends with or even the people I haven't met, um, you know, through your your network and stuff who are out there in radio. I don't work in, in your stations. I don't do music radio, but I know your frustrations. I know what you're going through with all of this stuff. I see it. If you have a problem, tell them it to me. I'll gladly yell it out because I don't care. <laughs> I want to work. I don't care in the in the best it. way possible. I don't want to ruin things for people, but things need to change. And I don't care if people are going to get pissed off by so you can't say that. Yeah, I can because the way you manage sucks. Or the way this station sucks. Or the way this company is running everything sucks. It needs to change. And you can't sit there. Why are we making money? Why are we down this quarter? What's going on? Because you don't listen. You don't support your people. And these people are trying to tell you the new way of doing things or the better way to do things or the different way of doing things. Maybe there's something there that we haven't thought of yet. Listen to those people instead of just saying, do what we tell you and then wondering why nothing changes. So uh, to all of you that watch Marie's uh, Radio Fam stuff and support her and everything, keep doing so. Support everybody else because that's the only way any of us are going to succeed is if we help each other because these companies are not going to take care of us.